Good afternoon and welcome to the Archdiocesan Multicultural Mass, this being the 109th World Day of Migrants and Refugees. The theme for this year is free to choose whether to migrate or to stay. My name is Eric Robinson. I'm Associate Director for Inclusion at Evangelisation Brisbane. Just have some housekeeping to share with you before we commence. If you require an usher, we have ushers at the doors, side doors and at the entrance. If you require a bathroom or toilet, there are three in the cathedral precinct, some below the cathedral, some over at Panola House, and we have some in the Hanley Room in the Francis Rush Centre. Please note there is no personal uh, photography during Mass, no videoing during the liturgy. We do have professional photographers, and this is to keep the reverence of Mass and for privacy reasons. The Mass will be live streamed, so you will be able to watch this afterwards. Please note in the Mass booklet, it's available, you can follow the readings and prayers of the faithful in language. I'd now like to welcome Uncle Joe Kirk up for the welcome to country and smoking ceremony, followed by the entrance procession with representatives from several Catholic cultural communities. Good afternoon, everyone. It's um, great to be here this evening as an Aboriginal elder of Brisbane and Ipswich. I've come a long way since I was raised by the government here in Queensland, and it's uh, exciting this evening to be here and supporting the Catholic faith that's not my faith. I'm a spiritual man from the land. I was raised in the bush, and I also was raised by the Queensland government. I came to Brisbane at the age of 17, and I realised then, as I did a lot of research, that I belong here. I really didn't belong on a government reserve way out in the bush called Sherberg Aboriginal Community in the South Burner. I found out that I belong to the tribe here in Brisbane. But sadly, we don't say our tribes much because we now urbanise but we still have our Aboriginal law that we live by. And I was raised in that law on my community as a young Aboriginal man, learned all my tr traditional dances and spirituality and culture and all that that goes with being an Aboriginal person. So my job here this evening to reassure you that we are one people. You're on our sacred land here in Brisbane. But all of Australia was given to First Nation people, no one else. Then we had different cultures come to our land and we welcomed them with open arms. And we celebrated their faith and their spirituality with ours. And as we stand as people today, if you're a citizen of Australia, you will stand and sing our national anthem that we fought many years as Aboriginals and as elders to change that national anthem, to make sure that we sing in it that we are one in our Australian Ab Ab Aboriginal anthem. We are one people. We always have been. We don't sing that we are young anymore. We sing that we are one people. And as God's grace is with us this evening, we're happy to be a one nation. And we welcome you all here as Aboriginal people, First Nation people. We call ourselves and we call this land that you walked on to get here Mother Earth because God gave it to First Nation people, just like he did with Adam and Eve. He gave them the Garden of Eden and they lived there happily. We know that story. 
And of course, we as First Nation people lived here until 1717, and then things started to change. But we thank God that the missionaries came. All religions came to our ancestors and told us about God and, and the Holy Spirit and baby Jesus that was there for all of us. Not just what we call the white people. That little baby Jesus and the Holy Spirit was there for everyone that believed in Christ our Saviour. We thank God for that. So I'm here now to say to you, in my language, Yamamuli, hello, welcome. Burunjija we muyuja, guyuja, muyugaye, which means hello, welcome to this, our First Nation spiritual land that the Holy Spirit is now with us all. And God bless us as we fellowship here together in our different beliefs and in our different religions, but never forget that God sees us as one people. We're all brothers and sisters in his sight. We're one nation people. And for those who come here to be a citizen of Australia, we welcome you, Yamamuli, and God bless us all. Thank you very much.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. A special greeting to San Giovanni Battista Scalabrini, who is here among us, I see. But not only Il Santo, but the Lord Jesus is here as he gathers us into the great symphony of faith that we call the church. And in that symphony of faith, every voice on earth has its place. And all the voices of the church in this part of the world come together in a great moment of praise today. Together we come to the Lord Jesus as those who are wounded by sin, but in him we find the mercy that is bigger than any sin and all sin. So let's greet the Lord Jesus as he greets us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed, through, <coughs> through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the God who is with us have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest.
Let's pray now in the silence of our hearts. We praise and bless you, God of all nations, for the many voices of this gathering. You have founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and love of each other. Grant that by keeping these, your precepts, we may come together to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Lectura del libro de Isaías Buscad al Señor mientras se le encuentra Invocadlo mientras esté cerca Que el malvado abandone su camino Y el criminal sus planes Que regrese al Señor y él tendrá piedad A nuestro Dios, que es rico en perdón Mis planes no son vuestros planes Vuestros caminos no son mis caminos Oráculo del Señor como el cielo es más alto que la tierra, mis caminos son más altos que los vuestros, mis planes que vuestros planes. planes. Palabra de Dios.
攻读圣保禄中途至腓里伯人书，弟兄姐妹们，我或生或死，总要叫基督在我身上受颂扬，因为在我看来。生活原是基督，死亡乃是利益。但如果我生活在肉身内，还能获得工作的效果，那么我自己也不知道要选择哪一样了。我正夹在两者之间。我渴望解脱，为与基督在一起，这实在是再好没有了。但是，我存留在肉身内，却对你们十分重要。你们生活度日，因合乎基督的福音。The word of the law.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. So they went at about the sixth hour and again at about the ninth hour. He went out and did the same. Then, at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more men standing round, and he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You go into my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his belief, Call the workers and pay them their wages. Starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. <clears throat> so those who were hired at about the eleventh hour <clears throat> came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, <clears throat> They expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner. The man who came last, they said, have done only one hour. And you have treated them the same as us. Those we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. He answered one of them and said, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. (coughs) Have I no right to do what I like with my own. Why be envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first last. This is the God of the Lord. Jesus
My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. So God says to us here in the cathedral this afternoon through the prophet Isaiah. And the prophet speaks the truth in the name of God. That God's ways and God's thoughts are not the ways and thoughts of this world. In some ways, they could hardly be more different. So the question is, what are the ways and the thoughts of God? Because you see, the call to us is to bring our ways and our thoughts into harmony with God's ways and thoughts. Because very often we are in conflict with God's ways and thoughts, and that is a path that leads to death. The only path that leads to life is if we can bring our ways and our thoughts into radical harmony with God's ways and thoughts. So what are God's ways and thoughts? They are the ways and thoughts of the God of radical inclusion, the God who excludes absolutely no one, where the ways and thoughts of the world are ways and thoughts that exclude, that shut the door, that say no. But here is a God who opens every door and welcomes every human being, always has and always will, summoning us therefore to understand in the depth of our being that we are in fact all sisters and brothers, not enemies or opponents, not just the other, but flesh and blood to each other. And I say this on this world day of the refugee and the migrant. How many of you have come to this country as refugees and migrants, and you come to us as a wonderful gift from God, but you haven't always found the welcome of God even in this country, perhaps especially in this country. And having listened to Uncle Joe's welcome to country, I can't help but think of our indigenous brothers and sisters who have been made refugees in their own land. The bitter irony of that. St. Paul says, avoid anything that would be unworthy of the gospel of Christ. It's very hard to think of anything that would be more unworthy of the gospel of Christ, contrary to the gospel of Christ, than to turn the indigenous of this land into refugees on their own country, or to slam the door in the face of those who come looking for shelter and who come looking for our home. So here are we saying no to that which is unworthy of the gospel of Christ. In that sense, this is a great protest gathering. We say no to that. St. Paul also says in words that have echoed down through the ages, life to me is Christ. Scalabrini knew that in his heart, and he knew that was true not just for himself, but for every human being on the planet. Christ is the way into life. And Frank Rush, one of my predecessors as Archbishop of Brisbane, who lies in the vault of this cathedral, took those words as his Episcopal motto, life to me is Christ, 
So in that sense, these words are engraved in the life and soul of the Archdiocese of Brisbane. But they mean different things to different people. Each culture gathered in this cathedral has its own insight into an understanding of what it means to say life for us is Christ. But that diversity, that difference, is no problem. It presents a fantastic possibility, the sharing of all our insights and understandings in that great symphony of faith, which is the Church. So what we do here today takes us not only to the heart of the Church that we call the body of Christ, this is a moment that takes us to the very heart of God who excludes no one but says we are sister and brother. The God who gives us a Christ who belongs to everyone, no more to any one person than another, no more to any one group than to another, and the Christ who belongs to the world humanity, not just to the Church. God sent his Son into the world, not just into the Church or into this ethnic group or that ethnic group, but into the whole world. So what we do here today in the Cathedral has to echo out into the world. Christ belongs to everyone. No one is excluded, and no one is overlooked. Those who seem to be overlooked are not overlooked. In fact, we've heard it in the Gospel story that has just been read. Here are the day labourers. You can still see them in the Middle East. They present themselves for work at the start of the day. They wait to be hired. And in the story that we have heard, some are hired early, some are hired in the middle of the day, and some are hired right at the end of the day and only do one hour's work. All of them are there because they have to feed their family, and if they're not hired, they can't feed their family. You can imagine the anxiety then of those men who waited and waited and waited and were not hired until the very end of the day. But then we're told the landowner decides to pay them just as much as he's paid those who have borne the heat of the day. It seems strange, but the generosity of God always seems strange. Why does he do that? Because, in fact, for those men in the square needing to feed their family, the waiting was their work as it so often is in the Christian life. So they are paid because they waited, not just because they worked in the vineyard. So this then is the God who welcomes not only those hired early, not only those hired in the middle of the day, not only those who are hired at the end of the day, but who welcomes them all and calls them friend. We heard it. My friend, he says to the Winger. And he says they are all friends, not just workhorses, human beings, and they are called by God friend, as we are. So this gathering is a gathering into the real God, not the tin pot false gods who always divide and exclude and reject. We turn our back on those false gods, but we turn deep into the life and the heart of the real God, the God who welcomes all, who pays all the same wage, and who is a God of infinite generosity, the generosity, in fact, that will lead us all home.
It's faith that binds us together and binds us to the Lord. So let's speak the faith that makes us one. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life ever. Amen. Together we have listened to the word of God, and now we speak our words of prayer in various languages, and we speak our words to the God who not only speaks, the God who listens. So let's pray now in the power of faith, the faith that speaks every tongue. Preghiamo per il nostro caro Papa Francesco, perché sotto la continua ispirazione dello Spirito Santo guidi il popolo di Dio ad apporare con compassione con chi non hai voce ed è immaginando, insegnando a tutti noi a mettere in pratica la parola e non essere soltanto ascoltatore della parola. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kuba Kristo wose kugira ngo bagire urukundo n'umwe byinda tandukana kandi kubatinya Imana imuhe n'ubudahemuka bwayo kubasakara iho. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Para os líderes mundiais, que em meio ao caos, guerra, injustiça e devastação, possam buscar soluções que promovam paz, justiça e amor para todos especialmente para aqueles que estão entre os menos favorecidos. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bagi semua orang dari segala bangsa, bagi semua orang percaya di setiap negeri, yang berdoa dalam berbagai bahasa, saling menjangkau satu sama lain sebagai saudara, Kiranya kita semua bekerja dalam kasih demi datangnya kerajaan Allah. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Hamari vivid samudai ke liye jaha aurod ho ya yudh stiti ho wo rahe na rahe जो भी लोग जिनको ज़्यादातर प्रेम की सहानुभूति की जो गरीब हो बीमार हो अकेलापन महसूस कर रहा हो जो बेरोजगार हो या परेशान हो इन सब को हमारी क्रिश्चियन समुदाय में सुख और समर्थन मिले आए हम प्रभु से प्रार्थना करें let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the children of our community will be treasured and fostered, and may our youth be inspired with Christian idealism, 
that many of them will embrace the priestly, religious, or missionary vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kami mengingati mereka yang telah meninggal kami, terutama mereka yang telah maut di lautan untuk mencari kehidupan yang lebih baik agar kemurahan hati Tuhan dapat memastikan mereka mendapat tempat di syurga dan bagi semua yang berduka atas kehilangan seseorang yang mereka sayangi semoga mereka mendapat keselesaan dan sokongan yang amat diperlukan dalam komuniti Kristian kami Let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer Your generosity, Father, knows no bounds. Listen to us now and answer us for the sake of Jesus, your Son, Lord of all nations, forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of all your people gathered here, that what we profess with devotion and faith may be ours through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ, your Son. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvellous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Archbishop, and Tim, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and Saint Stephen, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be cursed to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. pray now as the Lord Jesus has taught, and we pray in whatever language is yours. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, the 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Raise up, O Lord, those you have renewed with this sacrament, that together we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the key organizers of this great celebration has been Eric Robinson. And Eric is, oh, there he is. He is going to say a few words. So let's take a seat and listen to Eric. Thank you, Archbishop Mark. Just some thank yous and some logistics for after mass. Firstly, thank you again to Archbishop Mark and to the chaplains and concelebrating priests from the cultural communities that are present today. Thank you to the Multicultural Mass Committee that have done so much work in the months leading up to this. And really, the uh, brains behind this is Liliana Ortiz, who has directed all of that. So thank you, Liliana, for your tireless efforts. A big thank you to the choirs and the readers from each cultural community here today. We thank Uncle Joe for his generous welcome to country and the smoking ceremony. Thank you to the cathedral staff, Jerry, Alan, Dominic and Chris, and all the work from the evangelization team, the agency heavily involved in, in working on today's multicultural mass. Please join us after the mass uh, for the cultural performances, which will be in front of Mary McKillop Chapel, and there's refreshments and food available for everyone. But lastly, and most importantly, uh, we would like to congratulate Archbishop Mark, who is celebrating his birthday tomorrow. Thank you, it's beautiful. Uh, now, we do have something the cultural communities would like to present a gift to Archbishop Mark to thank him and for his birthday. And Archbishop Mark will invite you after Mass. We have a birthday cake for you, which we would love you to cut. And also, at the end of Mass, we'd like to take a photo with you here. I have to say, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> they didn't warn me, but thank you so much. They tell me I'm 75. I don't believe it. I think my mother made a mistake. I'm really, I'm really only 65. But, but thank you. <laughs> The, uh, so thank you very much for that unexpected and lovely gesture. But I just want to thank Eric and the team myself 
Uh, Liliane, he mentioned, Liliane Ortiz, whose husband uh, Ivan we have up here somewhere. Where are you, Ivan? Hiding down the back, who's one of our deacons. Liliana, I know, has done a prodigious amount of work for this, and it doesn't just happen. But to all of them, I really do, from the bottom of my heart, say thank you for shaping and making possible this wonderful celebration. And then I, I really do want to thank the priests up here and others who aren't with us, but not only for being here today, but for all that these men do as pastors of communities where much of the real spiritual energy of the church is now found in this part of the world. We have Father Luis Antonio Diaz Lamus, who is in fact chaplain to the Italian community, but speaks every language on earth. Father Gabriel is Indonesian and works with the Indonesian Catholic family. Father Cyrilus Madin is the, he's, he's from Indonesia, but he's the chaplain to the Hispanic community and my next door neighbor. Father Martin works with the Ukrainian church. Father Prem with the Sira Malankara church from the south part of India. Father Eli, who chanted the gospel so beautifully, where is, is priest of the Melkite church. Father John is the chaplain to the Chinese community, though he was born in Vietnam. And next to him is Father Francis, to whom I want to offer a very special word of welcome because Father Francis is visiting us from Canada, though he was born in Hong Kong. Welcome to Father Francis. And then we have Father Francisco, who is the chaplain to the Brazilian community. Now I notice we've got quite a lot of Brazilians here today, so muito obrigado. And Father Martinus is chaplain to the Indonesian Catholic family, and he is a Capuchin friar. So to these men, I say thank you very much. Let's stand as we seek God's blessing into the future and before we have a big photograph. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. And may the God who is peace and joy and love bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. No, no. There will be... Oh, that's my pistol. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like to come forward and have your photos taken with the Archbishop and the clergy, please do so.